Wilson 9.7 WGCC. Where I just heard was the air get worms by um, with me like hockey and I ran kind of turning the saber dance. And it's time to talk about the Buffalo Sabres and the Rochester Americans and review this season. The, the Sabres have been in a slump. They lost three games in a row and four of the last ten since the ten game winning streak. So the Sabres have come back to earth. On one hand, um, I'd say um, they're still ahead of schedule. <laughs> they're still in a playoff spot. Um, they still hold the last wild card spot. And if you told me, had, and most Sabres fans heading into this year, that we would be in a playoff spot come January 1st, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> Honestly, I'm looking at the Atlantic Division standings. It's, um... Tampa Bay and Toronto are the classes of the division, of course. Boston's third. Buffalo is fourth. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, I think Boston's going to jump ahead of, um, is going to stay ahead of Buffalo. Um, I expected bad years from Montreal, Detroit, and Ottawa, and those three teams have come back to earth. Ottawa and Detroit have lost six straight. Their seasons, a, their respective seasons, are now a mess. Montreal is um, in the mid, ahead, of, ahead of schedule. The team I was fearing is Florida. But Florida only has 40 points, so they're having a terrible season. But Buffalo's only one ahead of Montreal. They're only uh, they, they lost a huge game to the Islanders, so the Islanders are two back for the last wild card spot. So, it's going to be a fun end of the season. It's going to come right down to the wire. So, um, the Sabres aren't good, as of right now, aren't good, but they aren't bad either. I mean, yes, they've been in a slump. Dolan, Milstead, and Thompson are struggling a bit, but they're gaining valuable experience. And now that they are going to have a step up, we're still have, they're still in a good spot. I want these guys in hard situations. It'll make them better. <laughs> the Sabres are losing games, and it's easy to pick apart what's wrong. But at the end of the day, they're not bad. They have a lot of growing to do, and they have turned the corner. The Sabres actually work hard in games, and they don't quit. They have a much better character group. The future is a, a hell of a lot more promising now that it's been a long time. <laughs> I know it's frustrating losing, but this, we should not because I give up. We should not give up on these guys. There's a lot of things going on here. They won ten in a row and they weren't as good as they thought they were. But when you play that bad stretch, the ten game stretch, it's not as bad as we think. Um, this is gonna get some grades um for this season. Overall, I give them a B minus. No, it was it was it was an A plus during the tag game win streak, but nobody in their right mind said they'd be this far up in the standings at this point. They have proven they can play with any team in the league. But the lack of depth, lack of secondary score, and continued power play rules has them losing the one goal games they were winning earlier, even though the overall play has been on par with their opponents. Michael gets an A. He's dominant and has carried the team on his shoulders. He's also been real good in his own end and not off the ice. Jeff Skinner is, I give a B. He's still finishing, but he's not as sharp as not moving in fuck. Jason Pominville gets a D. He's been invisible without Eichel. If he wasn't on the Eichel line, he'd be an F. Ryan Hart, same as Pominville. Well, but he, I give him, a, but I give Reinhardt a C. He still does a lot of things well, as getting a lot of points, but still looking for more some for someone who is supposed to be the top line guy. Too many players die on his stick lately, and the fact he's a wing now is hurting the organization. Apollo gets a D. He stopped producing, and he does not look like he fits what the team is now. Sherry gets a D. Lots of speed, and it helps, but doesn't score enough and falls a lot. Middlestad gets a C. Again, expected a lot was not realistic, and he's been and he's not being put into a situation where he can succeed. 
has caught he's not caught a lot of speed in the NHL yet. Gus gets a B. He is what he is. Just wish he could put a few more goals. Who could put a few more goals? Patrick Berglund, F. Put the Sab he put the Sabres in a bad situation in centers. So disappointing. Tage Thompson gets a B minus. I think he's doing okay, and he's been has a good shot, and he used it. He needs to be put with players who can go to the net more. Johan Larson gets a B. He's become a pretty reliable pest like he used to be. And he's, and he's even potted a couple goals. I'm thrilled overall. Sepulka gets a D. He's now being asked to do more, and it's come a little short. Players are dying all around him. Evan Rodriguez gets a D-. minus. He brings energy and speed, but he's produced scant little. Honest player, but he's a tweener. The fact he's a regular speaks to the overall lack of talent, overall still. <laughs> Remember me, Ellie gets an F. I'm not sure why he's given a roster spot when he's literally done nothing. The defense. Rasmus Dahlin gets a B plus. He continues to be brilliant, but he has awful rookie mistakes. But you gotta remember, he's just a rookie. Jake McCabe, B plus. His being hurt has played a role in the Sabres standing and continues to be solid. Ristolainen gets a B plus. The crappy moments in games are fewer and farther between. And when he's on, he's been terrific. He's a true difference maker. But Gojin gets a B plus. Overall, still playing well, but with injuries on the blue line, he's been tasked with a little more, and at times it has shown. Scandella gets a B plus. A Bruce been brutally bad, then injured, but better in the few games since. Nathan Bull gets a C plus. He adds more on the offense, and then subtracts in his end. Casey Nelson is incomplete because he injured, and he's needed in seven eighth of role. Lawrence Pilot gets a B plus. Shackley good and consistent for the most part and an upgrade over the fire six parents. He's still a rookie and showed a couple games. <coughs> Brandon Gooley gets an incomplete. <coughs> Probably not fair to grade him, but he's obviously not NHL ready. Carter Hutton gets a B. He is he's had a few stinkers, but he in my opinion is the biggest reason for the Sabres huge jump. I say combination of him and the top line play of Skinner. And a better defense of Dolly. Um, but with, without Hutton, we, the Sabres might be down last place where they were last year. Allmark continues to be a reliable, reliable number two, so he gets a B plus. Power play gets a D. Nothing has changed. And close games, this is making a negative difference to the team. Pelly Gill gets an A minus. They're really good overall. It just sucks that the obvious goal get up from the Bruins takes the game to overtime. Coaching against gives a C minus, and I've been critical of Housley, but I think Housley should be credited for getting the Sabres to play an up tempo style game. And overall, they are able to compete every night with every team they face. But some of the line decisions and continued inability to, to consistently start a period or a goal scoring strong suggests that he still has issues pushing the right buttons. I still can't help but think there are coaches in the league that could do more with this roster. And that ultimately is my problem with Housley. Jason Botterill gets a B. I admire what he's done overall to improve the team in the last season. And it's obvious he has a long-term plan for them. Finding a gem is a guy like Pilot is what heroes are made of. He might have gotten one in Thompson too. Team does need a fresh face or two to spark something positive at a time of need. <laughs> and Botterill has largely stood pat. I think the reasons why should be obvious when you consider he's already got five rookies playing regular minutes in Milstadt, Thompson, Dolly, and Pilot Omar, and a very strong desire to keep the farm competitive in what is supposed to be a transition year. Overall, the team is still very marginal and that they need to have all the boxes checked to win. If they go and if you go unchecked, they lose close. The team has put a few injuries that expose the lack of death and the lack of quality death. The burglar situation has hurt the team far more than what appears on the surface. Not having that court center has put guys into positions that they are not ready for. And it was already being pushed with the loss of Ryan O'Reilly. Both O'Reilly and Burglar are gone for the very good reasons for the team. Secondary score has a huge issue, and for the long term of the good of the team, it's going to be needed to address from with either from the farm or what's going on the roster. The power play is bad, and it cost them several games. 
If both do not approve, the Sabres will be hard-pressed to maintain a playoff spot, if, if they do. The Sabres will solidify the position. Housley continues to be noted more for his gum chewing and inability to push them to produce. Are there other coaches who could do more? I think there might be. But I also believe Housley is going nowhere, and so, so here's hoping he can find the right kind of bonds to push. I think he has a good system, but he needs to get this team to play their best. If Bottle can add a short term without sacrificing what could be a wealth of talented difference makers in the next draft, he'll prove that he's a top shelf manager. <coughs> Meaningful games was the goal, and this team has them early, early far earlier than expected. Earning the playoffs is the goal now, and, and if they can do it if I can stay healthy and the secondary score improves. Where thoughts to the Sabres team on Twitter at JRed Show? Amherst with got a huge win last night. They came down back from three to one down. They tie a three. That was four four. But then with um, le less than with that with thirteen to. Sorry about that. So this, the Emirates got a huge comeback win against the uh, um. Not the Yukon Commons. The the, the Bridge for Star Tigers. R Asplund scored a huge goal with thirteen seconds left. It was his second of the year. And eight, tenth point overall. Um, I felt they had a good shot at winning. Deep in the third period, I really thought a win was impossible. Things just weren't going well for the team. And if it, they weren't getting solid goaltending, they were just playing ugly. This game can be crazy sometimes. Basley, Bailey wasn't hustling. He was missing breakaways, as he always does. Olsen was missing the net again. Nylander was invisible. Gooley was an embarrassed, was embarrassing fall during a power play. Wedgwood led the two softies. Even after the goalie was pulled, nothing was happening until a timeout with 18 seconds left. Dynasty was told to set up a play is pretty but what basic. Draw a net and write on it. Deposit the puck here. Simple, the Ambers kept the puck in the zone and another face off, and suddenly there was the invisible Nylander flying away. And equally inefficient as Blitz standing around. Overtime was mostly bridge for playing keep away and Wedgwood making the saves. So the shootout also scores in the first goals, and Wedge was perfect. So overall, Amherst fans, um, they, I guess they should. I don't think they should be happy this year. They are currently first in the division, two points ahead of Syracuse. But I know some fans are playing about bottle about um, bottle being too conservative and not getting help. But hey, we're still we're still in first place. Um, I know they've been fired fire last ten games, been kind of inconsistent. I know it's, this kind of reminds me of a lot of fans of last year, but a conservative approach is the way to go. We don't want Bottle to be like Tim Murray to burn assets. So what are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. We'll get back into the music of a few more sports talk before I leave. If you're requesting me on Twitter at JRed Show, um. Coming up next is the Rantals with Friends of P. Just keep all 9.7 the music I found. <laughs> 